Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamanova Yoga. I'm Ali and today is day 29 of our 30 day hero journey through yoga, our love yoga series. And today's theme is the end is the beginning. If we look around us in nature, in our own life, um, there is this cycle, everything runs in cycles and you know, the Hindus have a concept of this wheel where there is the beginning, preservation and destruction. So it's creation, preservation and destruction. And again, it continues eternally. And if we look around us, everything is in that cycle. Even when we look at a flower, it has this cycle within itself. The seed has this cycle, the tree, our life or little elements of our life also have this cycle within themselves. So this is the theme of the class that when there is a door that closes, another door opens when something comes to a closure, that is the beginning of something. When something becomes destroyed and dies, this is the beginning of something else. And we, when we were in the darkest of the dark uh, during the hero's journey, that's when things go into hibernation or when things start brewing for the new cycle to begin. For example, the Scorpio sign is during fall when everything dies and when you look at a seed, it gets buried, right? When a seed falls from the tree or from a plant and falls in the ground, it gets buried and it goes into the darkest of dark. In nature, it is really getting darker and darker each day. Uh, under the ground, it is dark. So it looks like the seed died, but <laughs> Little do we know that in spring this is going to be sprouting and it will explode with massive energy from within because every seed has thousands of times the energy of um, the actual material uh, plant locked into the seed and that explodes into a massive tree or something like that. So when things come to a closure, even though it feels sad or it is the end of something, it's of course obviously the beginning of something beautiful, new and exciting. So the end is the beginning. Are you ready to flow with strength and ease? Starting in the front of the mat, roll the shoulders back and drop them down, pull the belly in, lifting Mula Bandha, engaging Udiana Bandha, two inches below the navel, pulling, pulling the muscles in, engaging those muscles, softening the rib cage, deepening the breath, and beginning to cultivate Ujjayi breath. Bring your hands by the sides and imagine your fingertips heavy as lead. They're pulling down as there is a pull through the crown of the head up. All four, of, all four corners of the feet are dropping into the mat, heavy, and at the same time we feel that opposing action up. widening the back, dropping the shoulder blades into the back, the collarbones are pulling away from each other, widening, feeling complete connection with the core, Chin parallel to the floor, corners of the lips are smiling, softening the face muscles. Inhale the hands over the head, lifting, reaching. Exhale, diving forward forward bend, you can keep a mouth bent in the knees, hands on the shin bones, inhale, pull the belly in, 
lengthen through the crown of the head, the back of the neck is lengthening as well. Bending the knees, place your hands on the floor, spread the fingers wide open and step into <coughs> plank. Pressing the heels away from you, pull the belly in, a really strong plank, lower down chaturanga and upward facing dog, really soften here. Again, the back of the neck is lengthening. And exhale, down dog. Five deep breaths here. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. As you exhale, walk your feet between the hands, forward bend. Straight back, inhale, pull the belly in so that you're supported here all the way coming up to standing, reaching over the head, arching, exhale the hands over the heart. And that's one Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach over the head, exhale, folding. Inhale, look ahead of you. Step it back, plank. Chaturanga, and again, inhale, open, exhale, down dog. Five deep breaths here. And let's walk to the front. Exhale down, inhale on the way up. Arching. Exhale the hands over the heart. Release on the sides. Inhale up. Exhale, sweeping forward. Inhale, look ahead of you. Step it back, plank. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, softening the chest, exhale, down dog, lifting the tailbone as high as you can, five deep breaths here. Let's walk to the front. Inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands over the heart. Release. Sweeping all the way over the head. Exhale, folding. Inhale, look ahead of you. Step it back. Chaturanga. Up dog, down dog, breathe.
and let's walk to the top of the mat. Inhale, reaching over the head. Exhale, hands over the heart. Release, big breath in. Exhale, falling. Inhale, look ahead of you. Step it back, plank, hold the breath. And you can exhale down. Inhale up, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. And breathe. Really enjoy this inversion here as you breathe and lift as you're lifting the tailbone. And the spine is placed in a favorable position out of the upright position that we're all day long. So this is a good place to rearrange yourself basically, metaphorically speaking. I'm sprinkling a little bit of yin <laughs> into the yang. <laughs> And the metaphor is a very in feminine thing. All right, walk to the top. Exhale, folding. Inhale. Sweeping the hands over the head. Hands over the heart. Release, big breath in. Exhale down. Inhale, look ahead of you. Step it back, plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana, breathe. And as a down dog comes to an end, a new pose is born. Step to the front, forward bend. Inhale, reaching over the head. Exhale, release. Chair pose, inhale, reaching over the head. Exhale, folding. Inhale, look ahead of you. Pull the belly in, step it back, plank, chaturanga, inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog, inhale, the right leg up, step it through, drop the back heel down, come up, warrior one, five deep breaths here. Last one. Exhale down. Vinyasa. Up dog. Down dog. Inhale the left leg up. Step it through. Inhale, come up. Five deep breaths here. Finding the proper hip alignment here for you. Focusing on the center of the back heel, the right heel, uh, regardless of if it's touching the floor or not, just having that direction down through the back of the heel. And this movement forward here into the right hip. Big breath in, exhale down. 
Viņa sām. Down dog. Lifting the tailbone and that lift takes a lot of the weight off of the wrists and hands. You should not feel a collapsing feeling into the wrist here. You should definitely energetically lift the forearms and there is a spiral energetic lift into the forearms. The hands are spread open when we talk about mechanics, then the hands are spread open and you're placing equal weight on the inner and outer wrists so really spread the fingers open and that will ensure that you're distributing the weight evenly lifting through the tailbone and bringing some of that weight back into the legs let's walk to the front exhale down chair coming up and coming out of chair exhale hands down over the heart release let's go again inhale exhale down inhale look ahead of you plank to chaturanga to up dog to down dog and here's take your right foot straight into the front between the hands drop the back heel down inhale Warrior one, exhale, lower down. Speeding it up a little bit, Chaturanga to up dog, down dog. Step the left foot through, heel to heel alignment, or you can step it out if you need to. Warrior one, exhale down. Chaturanga. Up dog, down dog, breathe. Now another way to make a modification in down dog. So some of you commented is walk your hands a little closer so that more of the weight is on the feet and here the hands are just stretching. You can even wrap your wrists around the elbows if you want to rest in down dogs so it's still an inversion otherwise if you have come to the place where down dogs are complete resting place then woohoo <laughs> stay in down dog and breathe i personally love down dogs but that doesn't apply to 100 percent of us we're all very different so we all adjust to our own body liking and let's walk to the front. I think that's the beauty of yoga. It teaches us more about ourselves. Inhale, reach all the way over the head. Exhale, over the heart. Chair, reaching over the head. Exhale. Inhale, step it back, plank. Chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Take the right leg through warrior one exhale down chaturanga up dog down dog left leg comes through warrior one exhale down and feel free to modify here into cobra instead of up dog and down dog and again modify if you must focus on your breath it's really the most important thing of the practice generally speaking surya namaskar a and b are mild enough for most of us but sometimes we have to modify They do facilitate really deep breathing, so that's the beauty of them. There's nothing like up dog, down dog, the whole sequencing opens up the breath. 
let's step to the front chair inhale out of chair exhale over the heart and again inhale chair exhale down inhale look ahead plank to chaturanga or to the belly inhale up dog or cobra if you're in up dog place all five toes down so the tailbone is aligning exhale down dog step the right foot through come up and exhale down and opposite side left foot steps through inhale up exhale down down dog everything comes with practice so if Surya Namaskar B feels hard for you over time of doing vinyasa, joining me for daily classes, it will start feeling light. And if it doesn't, keep modifying. Let's walk to the front chair. Inhale, coming out, exhale, lower the hands over the heart. Inhale, reaching chair, exhale, forward fold. Look ahead of you, plank to chaturanga, to up dog, to down dog. Take the right leg between the hands, come up. Exhale, down. Let's go over to the left side and down. And breathe. This is the last Surya Namaskar. Step to the front. Chair. Inhale, coming out. And exhale, hands over the heart. Inhale the hands over the head chair. Hold for five breaths. You can tuck the tailbone under, pull the belly in, press the knees as far back as you can. Really engage your core. Instead of rushing through it, enjoy it. Enjoy the strength of your body. Inhale, coming out. Arch. Exhale, folding forward. And you can place your hands underneath your feet. Push your toes down onto the hands. If you need to bend the knees, bend the knees. And breathe.
and let's release the hands straight back pull the belly in inhale coming all the way to standing exhale the hands over the heart take a big step to the back of the mat with the right leg and here take a lineman for triangle pose so take wide stance here left foot pointing directly forward right foot 45 to 60 degrees in externally rotating the right hip extend the tailbone down with your banda and mula banda connecting press your hips back and reach away from the hips keep opening the right hip out externally rotating finding space and length reach ahead of you reach 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 and exhale lower down and take five breaths here Utita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. Now to come out of it, activate the feet and the core and come up feeling the strength of your own core, pivoting on the heels, turning towards the back, opening the left hip and you can keep a slight bend in the knees here, very important for those of you with hyperextended knees, reaching way ahead of you and lower down and hold now. In many of the Ashtanga series, they will tell you to hold your toes, but I find that very few can really hold a good alignment here, holding the toes, so just stay a little higher on the shin bone. You are benefiting far more from the pose here. The pose is beautiful, it's very beneficial. the hands are reaching away from each other opening the space between the collarbones lengthening through the crown of the head don't let your head hang here really keep the head and the neck in alignment with the spine so goes for the tailbone and coming out of this and pivoting on the heels turning towards the front of the mat one more time this time you're going to close in the back heel a little bit so that your hips are aligning with the front of the mat they're completely aligning here if you need to step in a little more step in a little more if you need to close the back foot a little more close the back foot but make sure that your hips are aligning with the front of the mat here there is different variations of hip alignment and we're looking for squaring the hips all right let's bring the chest parallel to the floor reach ahead of you with the right hand and lower down either onto the shin bone or onto the floor you can use a prop here a block or a block on the outside of the left foot so whatever works for you shin bone works as well and take the left arm up lengthen through the crown of the head and continue that action of keeping the hips or bringing the hips into alignment parivrita trikonasana breathe lengthening through the crown of the head and release belly activated coming up turning towards the back press the right hip back left hip forward now reaching forward with the left hand lower down and take the right arm up 
lengthening through the crown of the head. Breathe, revolving triangle pose. Great. Again, chest parallel to the floor. Come up and close it at the front of the mat. Hands over the heart. And let's take one more big step out. We're going to face the front of the mat, square the hips. And here there is a few options. You can keep your hands on the hips, making sure that they're square, or you can bring your hands behind you in reverse prayer and lower down. Intense side stretch, lower down as far as you can. Now I'm a little bit on the more flexible sides here. so. Do not compare yourself with me. You can stay halfway into the pose here. Bend the front knee slightly and bring your hands right above the knee. Stretching here. That is a very good modification of the pose. You can be also here, hands on the floor for a little more, for the more flexible. And if, if you're a little more hamstring open, then you can lower down here. So go with your, at your own level. To come out again, power up the belly. Come up, open, look up. And twist to the other side. Square the hips and lower down. Breathe. Intense side stretch. to come out, straighten the back, come up, look up, release, and step to the front, hands over the heart. So we're coming back to alignment in between the poses and tuning into the central axis of the body, finding that middle. And we'll take one more step out. Taking wide stance here and let's keep the feet parallel to each other. Outer edges of the feet are parallel to each other and the inner edges are slightly in. Stepping onto the outer and inner edges of the feet, you can lift your toes briefly just to find the four corners of each foot. And inhale, look up, bring your hands on to the lower towards the lower belly and lower down here the hands are gonna provide a little bit of a massage into the lower belly here let your head hang heavy you can bend the knees if you need to really modify in the way that feels good to you and feels good in the body here you can use the moment to look over to the left and right and really soften the neck. Relax the neck, relax the face. Inhale straight back, pull the belly in, come up, look up, back to neutral, exhale the hands behind you, interlacing the fingers, softening the shoulders, look up, Exhale, fold. Keep softening the shoulders here. Good. 
Great, release the hands, grab your big toes with a yogic hold here. So index and middle finger to thumb in a grip here. Press your elbows up and keep lifting here so you're engaging the upper back shoulders and soften through the breath breathe Great, come halfway up, bring the hands underneath your shoulders and either stay here or bring the hands a little behind the feet if you can, bending at the elbows and that will allow you to go just a tad deeper in the pose. You can always keep the knees bent if you need to and breathe here. That's a little more advanced, so if you're just holding your calves, that's also fine. You can even hug your calves with a bend in the knees. Great. To come out of this, you're going to bring your hands onto the hips, pull the belly in, straight back and come up. This is a really good practice for proper posture when we bend in life, bend forward so that we remember to come back up. So. Whenever sometimes someone asks you, this is a little lyrical <laughs> moment away from Ashtanga. If someone asks you to help them with moving a table, you always want to remember that body back, straight back. And that's how you're helping and moving things around. All right, step to the front. Hands over the heart. We're gonna take a big step or jump back and let's face the front of the mat. Warrior one alignment, so heel to heel alignment, but you can step it out a little bit. When you step it out, you can square the hips a little easier. So that's a beginner modification that is perfectly fine. Obviously works well with our anatomy if we're stepping hip width because the joints are aligning. If you have the flexibility to do heel to heel, do heel to heel. That is also within our anatomy. Yoga is within our anatomy. Holding here and feeling the pose without forcing any part of the pose. So if something feels uncomfortable, adjust. Warrior one, I consider a more advanced pose, even though we teach it in beginner classes, but there is such endless work in Warrior One that it can be um, taught from beginner to super advanced classes and it will still have room for work and growth within the pose. So it's a beautiful pose. It's a, a continuum pose, never ending pose. All right, coming out of it towards the right knee, reaching up here, square the hips, bending the right knee, breathe. And coming out of this, step to the front. Big breath in and let's take one more step. Warrior two here. Hold it. Now the back foot is a little more open because we're also opening the right hip and turning the hips towards the side of the room. Relax the shoulders, relax the hands, breathe. Coming out, opposite side. Mm -hmm. 
and stepping at the front here we will bring the right knee into the chest give me a few circles with your toes and either hold your right knee with the right hand or your big toe with your yogi grip if you're holding the toe then straighten either halfway or all the way and open here now bend the knee and open to the side and now when you're ready see if you can look over to your left away from your foot and here let's do triples pressing the foot into the thigh arranging the hips with that press and release and we're gonna go over to the opposite side knee into the rib cage i said loosely based on ashtanga this is definitely the <laughs> looseness here all right either hold the knee and do this pose here or hold the foot and straighten and bring your hand onto the hip now bend the knee to open to the side and look away from your toe that's for added balance work and you can do triples and release we're gonna take chair pose exhale down forward bend inhale look ahead of you plank to chaturanga to up dog to down dog and you can either walk or hop to the front and sit down and we're going going to inhale the hands over the head and exhale forward fold here you can keep the knees bent if you have a block you can place the block onto your shin bones or between the calves and use it as a um, forehead rest breathe soften inhale coming out of this cross the feet exhale plank to chaturanga feel free to skip the vinyasas and just hold the stretches longer down dog let's walk to the front sit down we're not doing that jump through of course because it's for more levels and i don't necessarily like the jump through for the shoulders that much so sitting at the front let's bring the right foot into the upper thigh reaching over the head exhale forward fold inhale coming up and either go straight to the second part or move through an up dog down dog that keeps the heat going opposite side
Inhale, coming up. Exhale, Chaturanga to up dog to down dog. And sitting back again. Here we're going to bring the left foot in half lotus. Inhale up, exhale, folding forward. I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones because again, as you breathe, if you go a little deeper in the forward bend, it massages your internal organs. And I really like those more shiatsu level yoga poses rather than the more milder or the milder ones. Inhale, coming up, either go straight to the other side or move through quick. Vinyasa. Opposite side. Exhale, chaturanga or sit back down or move through the vinyasa, down dog. And again, sitting down. Here we're going to bring the right foot on the floor, left foot extended, reach with the right hand, way ahead of you and back. Inhale, look up and exhale, folding. Inhale, coming out. Exhale, Chaturanga, up dog, down dog. And jump through or jump <laughs> to the front. Inhale, left leg, up, left arm up. And folding forward. Down dog. Coming to the front and we're going to extend the left leg. Bring the right foot in half moon. Alternatively, just do the previous pose where your foot is in the inner thigh. It's a beautiful pose. You will bend that left knee if you can, otherwise stay in the previous pose. Reach ahead of you. With here, you do have to get into a really good uh, half lotus, sorry, in order to be able to clasp behind and fold forward. <laughs> Pretzel. Pretzel pose. But it feels good. Coming up, 
chaturanga, up dog, down dog. Opposite side. Reaching way ahead of you. Wrapping behind and folding. So that's not for everybody this pose clearly. But give one stage of the pose go. Either half, half uh, lotus or even wrapping the hand around the knee and extending the left leg in front of you. That's another way to do it. So work with some level of the pose and have fun with it. It doesn't have to be the complete pose. Inhale coming out of this and let's spread the legs open and fold forward in a forward bend. Coming out of this, take your legs just halfway in. Here you're gonna bend the knees and fold forward. So for many of you, this is where you're gonna stay. Otherwise, you're gonna try to bring your right triceps underneath the right knee, left underneath the left and fold here. This is definitely not for beginners. So stay in a certain stage of this pose. The clasp is just for fun, really. It's because this pose has a very calming element to it because you wrap yourself into a forward bend, forehead to the ground, and there is a calming element. All right, and another way is to just bring the hands out and press them down. And you can come out of this. Now, we haven't done arm balances, so feel free to just stay here and stretch. But if you want to join me for an arm balance, we stretched and brought the hands here. Bring your feet together and you can clasp or the feet can be really touching, clasping, and you lift here. And another stage is to straighten. <sighs> How was that? Someone asked for an arm balance, so there. We will have one arm balance besides crow pose in the series. And that was it. You don't have to do it. If you want to try again, just walk up your, hand, your legs as high as you can onto your triceps and lift. And that's also enough. Just lift here. The straightening is just really working on your forward bend so that you have that flexibility. All right, let's bring the soles of the feet together. Hold here. Now, for a headstand, if you've never attempted a headstand, that's not the time to attempt a headstand. You can go into child's pose. If you have practiced headstands for quite a while, then you can take a headstand pose now. If you are not very good at them, but you've been practicing them for a while, go to the wall, clasp your hands and stack your pinkies on top of each other. So they're stacking, so there is balance here. And you're going to bring your head either into the hands or in the base of the hands. And that is the alignment of the hands. You're going to be pressing into your uh, forearms, elbow. So that's the active part. Not much weight is placed on the head. And either bring your head down and walk your feet in and that's it. Just stay here in this particular inversion so that you're getting the benefits of the inversion. Or you can take one leg off the floor and one up and then change and you can tap the other leg of the floor too 
or not. Another way to do it is to walk your feet as close to you as you can, hips over the shoulders and just bring your knees into your chest and stay here because this is safe or use a wall and keep pressing into your elbows and lower down and rest in child's pose. Inhale coming out of this and we're gonna lay down. Right knee into the chest, forehead to knee, straighten the leg, lower it down, bend the knee, bring it across into a supine twist. Opposite side, forehead to knee, straighten the leg, supine twist, knee across the body, soften. coming out. Either lay down or do plow. A modified plow will be a supported plow where the body is relaxing in the hands. Otherwise you can clasp your hands if plow is not an issue. Plow is great for, for um, scoliosis. It really unwinds the spine. Thyroid issues too. It involves all three bandhas here. So you can really practice your Udiyana Bandha here, soften the throat. And to come out of it slowly, lower down and Grab your the outer edges of your feet. And you can lower the legs on the ground and we're gonna lay here for a minute or so allowing the body to completely relax, let go, soften. Softening with each exhalation more and more. Let your feet drop to the sides so you're not supporting your legs. Let your hands be heavy. Soften the face muscles, soften the eyes, the eyelids, the temples, the forehead, the jaw. Relax the shoulders, soften the throat.
allowing your body to be weightless and your mind to be empty. Allowing yourself to just be. open to, to all the possibilities ahead of us, open to unlimited possibilities with each ending, a new beginning begins, contemplating the endings of our life that open up a whole new universe to us. Feel your belly softening here, letting go of tension in the belly. The breath is returning to normal, letting go of the ujjayi breath, just breathing softly. The belly is completely soft and mushy and relaxed. Actively relaxing the belly. Where many hold tension, so relaxing it with intention. Softening. And let's wiggle the toes and fingers. Inhale the hands over the head and stretch your belly as you point the toes and reach over the head. You can even move your toes here and you can move your hips up and down. Let's bend the knees, hug your legs into your chest, roll onto your side. Press yourself up to sit it. Inhale the hands over the head, exhale them over the third eye, blink your eyes open and over the heart and smile. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me today for this class. I will see you tomorrow with another class and after this series I will continue seeing you here on the channel. So for those of you that were sad about this coming to an end, the end is truly a beginning. We're gonna be doing a lot of new exciting things. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell button because nowadays subscriptions will not come to your channel necessarily. You're not gonna necessarily see new uploads. So make sure to ring the bell and also come back to the channel to make sure that you're getting the notifications and I'm quite excited for tomorrow. <laughs> Remember to flow with strength and ease. Namaste. Mm -hmm.